Hundreds of VR games ready to be played with just a simple link. That's the power of web VR, and this is what I'm going to show you how to make in this video. Now, on this channel, we've seen how to make a game for Android and PC. So if we want to make a VR game on an entire different platform, like the web, how can we do it? And for this tutorial, we are going to use Wonderland Engine. Now, Wonderland Engine is a game engine that is entirely optimized and simplified to easily create both augmented and virtual reality application on the web. I took some time to discover the engine, play around with it, and I'm loving it, which makes me super happy to announce that Wonderland has agreed to sponsor this video. So, hope you guys are ready. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first step to use Wonderland Engine is of course to download it, which is completely free. For this, let's go to wonderlandengine.com and after creating a new account that you can do with your Google account, we can download Wonderland by going to download and in my case, my computer is on Windows 64. So I'm simply going to click on the Windows 64 installer. Once installed, you can open Wonderland and you should see this. This is where you can open a project that you're currently working on or creating a new one by clicking on new. Then we can give a name to the project. Let's call mine my first web VR game. We can also set the path where the project will be stored. And finally, we can choose a template. Now we can start with an empty project, but to save me some time, I'm going to select VR and then click on create. There you go, after a little bit less than one second, which is a big difference from Unity, our project is open and ready. In the same way as Unity, the engine is separated in different windows that you can drag and rescale. We have the scene outline, which shows the hierarchy of your project, the scene view, which lets you navigate in the scene, the asset browser, which shows the asset of your game, and the console to help you debug. And finally, here you can have a look at the property windows, which show the property of your object. Now, as you can see, you can navigate in the scene using the mouse scroll, wheel and button. And by default, as we have selected the VR template, we have already a very basic scene with three objects and a VR player already set up for us. But to better understand what we already have, let's build our game to the web. Okay, so to build the game, it's pretty simple. We can simply click on this little play icon over here. And after waiting again, only one second, we now have a web page opening with our game. Now, by default, we can look around using the mouse and even teleport to the little feet position when we release the mouse button. And then we can also try the game in VR if our browser allows it by clicking on the little VR icon. But the most important part is that you can directly test the game from your VR headset on web browser. For example, here I have plugged my Quest in developer mode to my computer using a USB-C cable. And as you can see, if I go back to Wonderland, instead of local device, I can export the game on my Quest. There you go, now I'm in my Quest in front of a browser that has opened on the local host of our game. And if we click on VR, VR launched directly on the Quest. And I can see my hands, I can teleport. But the coolest part, if I let my controllers on the desk and wait just a little bit, as you can see, hand tracking is also working with the current VR setup. That's awesome. Now, at the moment, as you can see, the game is running locally with the local host URL. But of course, we can deploy it on any web page for anybody to try. And that's something that I'm going to show you at the end of these tutorials by hosting the game on itch.io. But first, let's see how we can improve our game. So back to Wonderland, what I'm going to do is select the cone shape and press on delete to remove it from the scene. Then we can do the same with the green sphere. Now for the cube, I'm going to scale it up a little bit. We can do so here with the scale tool, but otherwise we can directly set the scaling value to one in the properties. In my case, I also want to change the color of the cube. So let's go to mesh. And if we go to Mesh, Material, we can have a look at the material that we have currently on this project. But let's make a new one. To do so, we can go to View, Resources, then Materials, and click on Create. As you can see, this has added a new material at the end that we can rename Red. And if we drag this new material into the Mesh Material properties, we can now update it and change its diffuse color to red. Beautiful. Now I'm going to select our plane and scale it up to 10. As you can see, the collider does that scale with the mesh, 
So let's set the collider extent to 10 on X and Z. Maybe we can also change the color of the plane to something darker. And next for the light, I'm going to delete the second one. And if we go to the property of the light, as you can see, we can change it from point to sun. We can also enable the shadows, maybe reduce and tweak the intensity, maybe also change the rotation of the sun. There you go, beautiful. Next, I want to change the color of the sky. For this, we can go back to resources, create a new material called skybox and change the shader to sky. Beautiful. Now to set this material as the sky, we need to go to views, project settings, rendering, enable sky, and then set the material to be our sky material that we just made. Now, as you can see, the color is pink because we have not set a texture to be displayed on the sky. So you could basically use any 360 picture that you want. And in my case, I've downloaded before recording this video, this awesome 360 skybox, which you will be able to find in the description below. Now we can simply drag it to the Wonderland asset, but the texture is not compressed yet. So we need to go to resources and drag here our new texture that we want to add and then let's just wait a little bit. Perfect, now we can go to project settings and set the texture to what we just imported. And there you go, look at this beautiful sky that we have now. Okay, so we have now improved the look of the project, but let's add some gameplay. And to do this, I'm going to be able to grab an object. So let's right click on root, add object, mesh, set the mesh to primitive sphere, and the material to maybe dark. We can scale it to 0.2 on all the axes and move it above the table. Now this sphere has no physical properties, so what we need to do is click on add component and select Phys X. By default, Phys X is not active, as you can see by this little warning, so we can fix this by going to our project settings, physics, and click on enable. If we go back to our sphere, we can have a look at all the properties of the physics component. For example, we can reduce the bounciness to zero and set maybe the friction to 0.1. But the most important part that is different from Unity in this case is that we already have by default a collider that is inside the physics component. As you can see, in this case, the physics shape is set to sphere and its radius is of 0.25. Now, in our case, we need to set the radius at 0 0.2 to fit the shape, so here you go. And now let me show you one of the coolest features of this engine, the simulation of the physics. If I press on this little button, as you can see, we can simulate the physics of our game. And as you can see, the sphere falls, but it passes through both the table and the plane. Now, to fix this, let's select our cube and add a physics component as well. We can set the shape as box, and set the extent of the shape at 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 1, exactly like the scale. Now, as this cube doesn't move, we can set it to static. Beautiful. Finally, let's select our floor and do the same. So, first add a physics component, shape as a box, set the shape to 10, 10, 0 0.05, and set it as static. And there you go, now if you press on simulate physics again, it works as expected. But the last step is of course to be able to grab the sphere. We could make the component ourselves, but to speed things up, we are going to use three scripts that were made by one of Wonderland user. It is noteworthy that Wonderland has a super nice community which creates some really cool web XR games. Some of them are open source, which means that you can also learn from them to build your own game. Now, anyway, you can download this script from this awesome GitHub page, but I will leave the link in the description. Now, anyway, once downloaded, you can navigate till you see this PP folder, drag it to Wonderland Asset, and finally, to make them part of your project, you need to go to Project Settings, JavaScript, Add Folders, then navigate to where the folder is, and click on Open. And there you go. Now, next to set up the grabbing, we need to add a kind of manager to the scene. For this, let's create an empty game object that we can call scene, and then we can drag all of the object of our scene under it. Now, on this scene game object, we can simply add a PP gateway component. And on this component, we can set the my scene to be the scene object, the my player to be the player, and do the same for the other body part of our VR. 
There you go, we don't need to reference the others. Finally, let's select our sphere and click on Add Component PP Grabbable, which will make the sphere grabbable, of course. And then let's go to the player hand, which are located under player. And on the controller right, let's add a grabber PP. Then we can simply set the endedness to right. Next, we can add also a physics component and set the shape to sphere with a radius of 0.1. If you want, you can even translate it a little bit on the Y axis. But most importantly, let's set it to his trigger and his kinematic so that this object will not fall. Finally, we can do the same on the left controller, but keep it left. And guys, we are almost there. Now, just before building the game for the final time, let me just add quickly some bowling pin. And I'm going to do so by creating a new mesh. Set its mesh to capsule, change its color, add a physics component with a box shape of the same size. And finally, let's duplicate this object a bunch of time. And there you go, now everything is ready, let's test our final result. And there you go guys, we made it! We've successfully made our first web VR bowling game. From that point on, you can host the game on any website. For example, let's do this on itch.io. I'm going to simply go to the folder where my project is, then click on deploy, and we can zip everything here in a new folder containing the index file. Once that's done, let's go to itch.io, add new project, set the project to be HTML, and upload the zip file that we just made. There we go, now we can publish, and ta-da! Now our game is available on the web and can be played by everybody with the simple link that we have here. And that of course concludes this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed following along, and if you did, make sure to leave a like down below. A big thank you of course to Wonderland for sponsoring this video, and if you'd like to know more about them and build your first web VR game, go on their website, wonderlandengine.com, a big shout out as always to my Patreon, which are appearing on the screen right now. And if like them, you want to get access to the source code of all of my projects and exclusive content, join us, link in the description. Bye bye.